بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send our peace and blessings upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The last I left you with with the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the, uh, the Muslims and the Prophet of Allah had just completed the battle of Badr and uh, they had a successful victory they killed 70 of the, uh, of the people of Mecca and they had 70 uh, uh, prisoners of war. And so the non-Muslims, the people of Quraysh, they went back to Mecca, very sad. Of course, they were uh, yani, extremely shocked with the, with the defeat that they had, considering the numbers they had compared to the Muslims and whatnot. And now the Muslims, alhamdulillah, they're all extremely happy. They went back to Medina and they're, they're yani, elated. And they've got prisoners of war, 70 of them. Now this is the first time the Muslims ever go to war. What do they do with, the Muslim, with these prisoners of war? So the Prophet of Allah, he turns to his companions. And what does he do? As usual, he does shura with them. He asks them. He asks them just like how he asked the people of Badr when they were on the way, right? And they went to go and uh, intercept the caravan and then all of a sudden it became a war. He, he what? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi he spoke to his companions and he asked them for advice to see what they think. So the same thing happened. The Prophet of Allah asked his companions, what should we do with the prisoners of war? So Fulan spoke, another person spoke, another person spoke. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, then he gets up and he speaks. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says Islam is weak. Islam in a, is, 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 uh, is in a state right now where we need some money. Why don't we ransom them and we can use that money to support the Muslims? It's a good opinion. Then Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu stands up and he says, no, I think we should give the cousin of Ali to Ali and the cousin of Umar to Umar and let the cousin of Umar, let the cousin of Umar and the cousin of Ali be slaughtered by his own cousin. A strong opinion. But that's the, that's the opinion of Umar ibn al-Khattab. And they went around with the opinions and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took the opinion of who? Of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Where they ransomed them they, uh, and they used the money to support the Muslims. Next day, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is crying. Who's next to him crying? Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu is crying. And so Umar ibn al-Khattab walks past and he sees this with his own eyes and he's thinking, Ya Allah, what's happening? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is crying. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is crying, what's happening? Ya Rasulullah, tell me what's happening so I can cry with you. So I can cry with you. So he asks him, a Prophet Allah, what's happening? He says to him, Ya Umar, Allah agreed with you what you, what you said. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down verses in the Qur'an agreeing with what Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said in that gathering where they had. So saying that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa chose the wrong option and he should have been what Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu chose. So what did Umar ibn al-Khattab do? And this is the, uh, the lesson that we want to take out from this part of the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, Umar ibn al-Khattab here in this point, not like you and I, right? And I'm the first person that falls in this, wallahi. If I'm right, but someone else takes another opinion, and then I found out later, I told you, brother, I'm on the haq, and you're wrong. I told you, but you didn't listen to me. What did Umar ibn al-Khattab do? What did Umar ibn al-Khattab do? He started to weep, and he started to cry with the Prophet of Allah. He started to weep, and he started to cry with Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, out of his love for them, not turning around and putting them down. No. And another lesson that we learn as well, if I just take it back one more time, even, even though all of the companions had an opinion, right? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose one, one opinion. That became the opinion of every single sahabi in that, in that session. Khalas, this is the opinion that we're going to go with. I'm not going to continue lobbying for my opinion. Khalas, I stick with that opinion. And this is what happened. This is what happened. As if that was my opinion that I, sh that I shared. I take it upon myself because this is what was, be, that was agreed upon the Muslims. So alhamdulillah, the Muslims won the battle of Badr. And then it was about one year one const, uh, of constant uh, skirmishes with the people of Quraysh. They would send يعني, a few people, they'll go they'll burn down a house or they'll kill one or two Muslims and the Muslims will fight back. Just a few skirmishes here and there. And then Ghazwat Uhud occurred. The battle of Uhud. And this is another great battle. It was about one year after the Battle of Badr. Now this battle has, a, has 
a lot of significance in the seerah of the Prophet And we mention it a lot because of the lessons that we take out of it. And there's one great lesson, inshallah, that we're going to learn out of this, uh, out of this, this battle. So, the people of Mecca were extremely upset. How can we lose? So for one full year, they began to uh, save up the money. So we said Abu Sufyan, when he was going up north to Asham, so he can do some trade, and he came back with 1,000 camels. He ended up with that 1,000 camels going back, to, going back to Mecca. But they used that money to prepare themselves for another battle, a greater battle, more money, more soldiers, more weapons. They were ready. They wanted vengeance. They wanted that revenge. So many of their great uh, leaders were killed in that battle of Badr. So they wanted to go back and get the Muslims. So the news came out that Quraysh was preparing an army to go and attack the Muslims. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa received this news. Again, does shura with the, uh, with the Sahaba? And he asks them, what should we do? So now the Sahaba, they were in two minds. The older Sahaba wanted what the Prophet of Allah wanted. And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa wanted to stay in the, in, in the city, in Medina. He wanted to stay and wait for the mushrikeen to come to Medina and then he'll fight them in the city. Why? Because the Muslims know the streets, they know their own houses, they know how to get around the ins and outs. The mushrikeen have no idea. They're going to be like lost chicken running around. They have no idea what's happening, right? That was the plan of the Prophet of Allah. However, the younger companions, they didn't want that. No, Ya Rasulullah. Let's go out and let us go and find them on the battlefield. Let us face them face to face. Let us not wait for them. We'll go out to them. We're strong. Let's go and get them. Why? Because they were there in Battle of Badr. And they wanted to be part of it. So now they got that opportunity and they kept on lobbying. They kept, ya Rasulullah, let's go. Let's go out. So Nabi Sallallahu says, okay, if this is what you want, then let's do it. So he puts on his armor. And Nabi Sallallahu is upset. He didn't want that. Right? So he puts on his armor and he's ready to go. And then they, they realized that Nabi Sallallahu didn't want that, he wanted to stay in Medina. So, he's, so they say to him, Ya Rasulullah, khalas, we'll stay in Medina. So Nabi Sallallahu says to them, no. No, it, is never been, it was never decreed upon a prophet that he puts on his armor and he takes it off. We're going. So they take off. They head off, the Muslim army heads off to where? To the mountain of Uhud. This is where the battle of Uhud took place. And now the Muslim army is ready. The, the army of Quraysh comes, comes closer and now there's a Jabal, a mountain. It's not really a huge mountain, it's more like a hill, but they called it Jabal al-Rumat. So the, 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 the mountain where the archers were stationed. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa stationed a number of archers on this, uh, on this mountain. It was something like a few numbers. Yani there's a difference of opinion, I think about 40, 50, some of them say 70. Uh, so there's a, diff so the a number of archers were stationed on this mountain. And the Muslims were beside that mountain. And in front of them were who? The people of Quraysh, ready for the battle. Then the armies clash. And the Muslims, of course, again, lower in number, smaller in number, less equipped, less uh, yani, trained, right? So now they went, they clashed with the, with the non-Muslims, and then the Muslims began to win the battle. Allahu Akbar. They started to move forward and they, uh, they, they, they stormed forward and the mushrikeen started to turn around. They started fleeing. They ran away. Now, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prior to this, he gave an order to the archers on the mountain. Do not move from your station. Period. Whatever happens, if you see the Muslims being slaughtered, don't move. If you see the Muslims winning the battle, don't move. That was the order of what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the people who were on this mountain. And so the Muslims began. They won. They're running. They're moving forward. And then the people on the mountain, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, we're winning. The booty of war. Let's go. They wanted the money. So they ran down. And the leader of, of, the, of the archers said to them, don't run away. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us to stay on this mountain. They didn't listen to him. They took off. Only about 10 of the, of, the, of the archers actually stayed on the mountain. And the rest took off. Running after what? The booty of war. Now Khalid ibn al-Walid radiyallahu anhu, before he was a Muslim, was on the side of Quraysh in this battle. He was a very smart man. A strategic man. He was, he was uh, 
at the back of the battlefield, watching everything happen. Him and his uh, cavalry, his uh, number of horses. So he saw all of this happening in front of him and he saw those number of people running down from that mountain. He said, this is the time to pounce. This is the time to run. So he grabs all of his horsemen and he takes off. Takes off where? Around the mountain. Goes around the mountain. No archers to stop him now, right? So he goes around the mountain with his horsemen and then he goes behind the Muslims. So now the Muslims are getting, going to get sandwiched by Khalid bin Walid and his army behind them and then the mushrikeen who were in front of them. So now the Muslims were in a, in a very tough situation. What do you do? What happens? And then the Muslims were getting lost and the, and the mushrikeen that were running away turned around. Now it's time for us to go and charge. So they went back this way. The Muslims were in the middle getting sandwiched. What happened? The Muslims began... Yani, the, the Muslims had, a, had a, a devastating loss, an extremely harsh loss, to the point where in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your prophet was injured in a number of areas. The narration mentions that he was injured on his forehead over here. He was, his tooth was broken. His, t- his knees were scarred. Right? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was injured so much so that he was onto the ground and people thought that the prophet of Allah died. So then amongst the companions... There was a rumor, the Prophet of Allah died. What happens? Your morale drops. Prophet, oh, I'm walking. I'm going home. It's not happening anymore. I'm dropping my sword. Your, the Prophet of Allah died. What happens to you? What, what do you do when you hear, when you hear that? Right, what happens? So that's, yani, the morale of the, of the companions was so low after that rumor had, uh, had gone past. And then one of the companions, he saw the Prophet of Allah. And he saw, and the narration mentions, Lam'atul Ain. I'm trying to find like a, a, the right word to use so I can uh, translate it. Yani, but he saw the, the shining part of his eye, Nabi Sallallahu from the corner of his helmet. And he's shining, meaning what? He's alive. So he called out, Nabi Sallallahu is alive. So Prophet Sallallahu tells him, be quiet before they come and kill me. Right? So, uh, and then the, the companions, they gathered around the Prophet of Allah. They started to protect him. And then the Muslims, they, they, they kind of had a, a retreating session right then. They ran away. Now, the lesson to take, the lesson to take, what was the reason why the Muslims were defeated? Simply because they disobeyed the order of the Prophet. They disobeyed the order of the Prophet. Now I want you to, to think of something. From a third person, from someone who's listening to this, right? You and I weren't present. It is out of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this occurred. Allah azza wa willed it to happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted this to happen. And he knew this was going to happen for a reason. As a third person, you and I, from listening to this story, what do you gather? What do you gather? If the companions who lived with the Prophet of Allah were killed and suffered so much in this battle for disobeying the order of the Prophet of Allah, what about you and I? What about you and I? What happens to you and I when we disobey the order of the Prophet of Allah? When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa tells us to do X, Y, and Z, but we choose not to. What happens to us? What state are we in? Right? How do we have the, uh, the audacity to turn to Allah Azza wa and ask Him if we're not even listening to the orders of the Prophet of Allah? My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, it was an, a devastating loss for the Muslims. And it's a lesson for you and I and for the generations to come that we must listen to the order of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what happened in the battle of Uhud. And then there was a few more skirmishes after that until... The Muslims reached the battle of uh, Al-Khandaq or Al-Ahzab as, as it's commonly known as well. And that's another battle that occurred, but I'm not going to speak about it today, inshallah, maybe next time or tomorrow whenever I am here. Uh, inshallah, these are the lessons that we want to take from the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Not just so we can listen to it and say, Ya Rabb, Wallahi, the Prophet Sallallahu went through a tough time or the companions that had it tough. 
You know, they did this for us, alhamdulillah, we're Muslim. No, it's so we can learn lessons, so we can take out these lessons and apply them in our lives. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who apply these lessons in our lives. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdik, nashadu wa la ilaha 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 ilaha